Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt, and today I'll be breaking down the best ETFs in Canada for dividends. These are the Canadian ETFs that pay a generous dividend that you can hold on to life and collect that easy passive income every month or every quarter. Plus, they'll give you a well-diversified exposure to the Canadian market. That makes them great for any investor, especially for beginners with a lot of room in their TFSA. I'm only going to be talking about ETFs in Canadian dollars that track Canadian companies. So no ETFs that track the US market like the S&P 500. All of my US ETFs I hold in US dollars and I keep them in my RRSP to avoid paying US withholding taxes. The ETFs that I'm talking about today give you purely Canadian income, so I keep them in my TFSA. And once that's maxed out, put them in your RSP so that you won't be paying any taxes on the income that you earn. I'll be breaking down which types of investments I put in my TFSA versus my RSP to minimize taxes in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. Before I jump into my list, make sure you watch my previous videos in my dividend investing guide. I have a video on the basics of stock market investing and dividends, my top three dividend stocks in Canada, and a video on ETFs. So click the pop-up at the top right to check these out. For this video, I'm going to assume that you know what an ETF is and what a management fee or MER is. If you don't, then watch my ETF video first where I cover all the basics. In a short summary, an ETF is a way to buy hundreds of stocks within a single fund. So instead of putting all your eggs in one basket by investing in one company, you are diversifying your portfolio by investing in a little piece of hundreds of companies all at once. And you collect profits through dividends from each of these companies. So without further ado, let's jump into the best Canadian ETFs for dividends. Let's start with XIC. XIC tracks the TSX capped composite index. And so it tracks the 235 largest Canadian companies on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Unlike the other ETFs on this list, XIC is not specifically designed to target high dividend stocks. It just contains the 235 largest companies in Canada, and the Canadian market is dominated by the financial industry, energy companies, utilities, telecommunications, and materials, all of which pay a generous dividend. By collecting the dividends from these 235 companies, XIC is able to pay out a dividend yield of 3% every quarter. This is definitely the lowest dividend yield on this list, but XIC does have a few advantages. It has the lowest management fee, and it has the widest diversification. Since XIC is just tracking the Canadian market, it is purely passive management. There are no decisions to make in terms of the breakdown of this fund. And so XIC can get away with rock bottom management fees with an MER of only 0.06%. That means that if you have $1,000 invested in XIC, you'll only be paying 60 cents every year in fees. That's practically nothing. Remember, with ETFs, you'll never see this management fee taken out as a transaction. This fee is built into the price of the ETF that you're looking at. Another way to consider the effect of the management fee is to subtract it away from the dividend yield. So if our dividend yield is 3%, but we pay 0.06% in management fees, then our net income is 2.94% every year. Of course, this doesn't consider capital gains as the value of the ETF grows. This is just the cash that we obtain every single year through dividends. I can also calculate the amount you need to qualify for a drip. Remember in my previous video, I went over the benefits of drips. Instead of receiving that dividend in cash, you can use that dividend to automatically purchase a new share of that stock or ETF without paying any commission. This is incredibly useful when you're investing in stocks, but if you're using Questrade, which is my favorite online broker, you don't pay any commission on ETFs anyway. And so using a drip on ETFs won't save you any money, but it does automate the compounding growth of your ETF rather than having to manually purchase a new share every time you receive a dividend. If you're not using Questrade and you do pay commissions on ETFs, then definitely sign up for a drip. It will save you tons of money in the long run. Or better yet, sign up for Quest Trade and never pay commissions on ETFs ever again. Check out my video on why Quest Trade is my favorite online broker and for a step by step guide on how to buy stocks and ETFs using Quest Trade. And if you'd like to sign up, use my referral link in the box below to get $50 in commission free trades. Plus, I'll get a small referral bonus. So back to XIC. With a yield of 3%, you'll need to own $3,615 in XIC to qualify for a drip. That 3% dividend gives you $108 a year or $27.11 every quarter. The share price for XIC is $27.10, and so your dividend is enough to automatically purchase a new share of XIC. So that covers the dividend and the MER, but we also want to consider the holdings of this ETF. This ETF contains the largest and most secure Canadian companies, and so it contains Canadian staples like RBC, TD, 
Enbridge, Scotiabank, Canadian National Railway, BMO, Suncor Energy, and Shopify. And those are just in the top 10. There are 235 companies in total in this ETF. All of the companies in the top 10, except for Shopify, pay out a generous dividend. That's why XIC is still a great ETF for dividends, even though that wasn't its intended goal. Let's also look at the industry exposure of XIC. XIC just tracks the Canadian market, and you can see that the majority of the Canadian market is in financials, energy, materials, and industrials. You'll notice that technology is very small, only 5% of the Canadian market. In the US, the largest companies are the tech companies like Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon. But in Canada, there are only a few big players like Shopify, OpenText, and BlackBerry. But there is a silver lining. Tech companies almost never pay dividends, whereas the heaviest Canadian industries all pay generous dividends. Looking at the share price of XIC over the past year, you can see that it has steady growth. Our main goal with these ETFs is to collect passive income, but it's still great to see some capital appreciation while we collect those 3% dividends. At number two, we have the Vanguard ETF, VDY. VDY is essentially a specialized subset of XIC focusing only on the Canadian companies that pay a high dividend. XIC contained the 235 largest companies in Canada, but VDY contains only 54 of these companies who pay out a large dividend, mostly over 4%. So you won't see any tech companies like Shopify, but VDY does pay out a significantly higher dividend yield at 4.25%. And this dividend is paid out every month, so you'll get very steady income. The VDY fund requires a bit more work and maintenance. They're not just tracking the largest Canadian companies. They also need to filter out the companies that pay high dividends. And companies can raise or cut their dividends anytime. Because of this extra work, VDY charges a higher management fee than XIC, with an MER of 0.22%. That's almost four times the cost of XIC, but it's still less than 10 times the price of the average mutual fund. Mutual funds charge an MER between 2 and 3%. So only paying 0.22% in MER is definitely a better option. If you own $1,000 in VDY, you'll be paying $2.20 in fees every year. Again, this fee is built into the price of each share, or we can take it out of our dividend income. VDY pays a dividend yield of 4.25%, minus the MER of 0.22%. That gives us an annual net income of 4.03%. This is a great source of passive income while gaining decent exposure of the Canadian market. Since this dividend is paid monthly, we'll be getting smaller dividend payments, but more frequently. Because of this, we'll need at least $9,800 to qualify for a drift. With $9,800 and a yield of 4.25%, we'll get $416 a year or $34.70 every single month. That's enough to buy yourself a free share every month. That's 12 free shares a year. Plus, every month, your dividend will be getting larger and larger. And that is the definition of compound growth. Looking at the top 10 holdings of VDY, they are almost exactly the same as XIC, except that they took away the low dividends Shopify and Canadian National Railway, and instead bumped up Manulife, CIBC, and Sun Life Financial into the top 10. Looking at the industry breakdown, VDY is even more focused on the financial industry, with 65% of this fund invested in banks and insurance companies. Oil, gas, and utilities make up 29%, and the rest is pocket change. This fund is far less diversified than XIC. And even though the Canadian banks are some of the best investments in the world, having too much of your money tied up in one single industry can be risky, so don't rely entirely on VDY. Make sure you also own the other ETFs on this list to get better diversification. Looking at the price chart of VDY over the past year, it definitely shows more volatility with some significant dips, but it still shows an overall increasing trend. Again, by tracking such already large Canadian companies, we don't expect a huge amount of growth. We just want to collect that 4.25% of passive income. Any capital appreciation we get is a nice bonus. At number three, we have the BlackRock ETF, XEI. XEI is very similar to VDY in that it is a subset of the XIC holdings. So XEI only contains 75 of the largest Canadian companies which pay out a high dividend. But they significantly shake up the proportion of these companies compared to VDY and XIC. XEI has an even larger dividend yield of 4.72% and this dividend is paid out monthly. Like VDY, this ETF requires more work to manage, and it has an identical MER of 0.22%. So if you own $1,000 in XEI, you'll be paying $2.20 a year in fees. With a dividend of 4.72% and an MER of 0.22%, that gives us an annual net income of 4.5% 
collected monthly. To qualify for a drip, you'll need to own $5,660 in XEI. With a yield of 4.72%, that gives us $267 a year in dividends, or $22.65 every month. The share price of XEI is currently $22.25. So with $5,660 invested in XEI, you'll earn a free share every single month or 12 shares a year. XEI gives us a little bit more income than VDY, but its main difference is in its holdings. XEI contains 75 companies, and it focuses more on energy stocks and less on financials. The top 10 holdings still contain a lot of the same big companies like Enbridge, TC Energy, BMO, CABC, and Scotiabank. But interestingly, this ETF does not contain TD or RBC, which were the two largest holdings in VDY. Those two banks alone made up 30% of VDY's value, but they are completely absent in XEI. XEI's holdings are spread out more equally. In fact, all of their top 10 holdings have an equal weight of 5% each. Looking at XEI's industry exposure, you can see that energy and financials are equal at 30%. Compare this to VDY, which had 65% in financials. By stepping away from the financial industry, XEI is able to gain more exposure in telecommunications, utilities, and real estate. And so, it is definitely more diversified, and it is more representative of the overall Canadian market. Looking at the price chart over the past year, it also appears to be a little less volatile, with a more consistent and gradual increase, all while paying a generous 4.72% in income every month. The last ETF is VRE, and it is the most unique ETF on this list. VRE is a real estate ETF, tracking the largest REITs in Canada. In the same way that ETFs are a collection of hundreds of stocks, REITs are a collection of hundreds of real estate properties, all packaged together into one fund. And the dividends or distributions of a REIT come from the monthly rent earned from these properties. VRE is an ETF which contains 18 of the largest REITs in Canada. REITs are some of the best dividend investments out there, so it's no surprise that VRE has the highest dividend yield on this list, with a yield of 5.16%. Although, this yield is a little higher than usual, since the price dropped a little bit last week. But, VRE usually has a yield around 4.8%. This ETF requires even more work to manage, and so it has the highest MER on this list, with 0.39%. But that's still pretty reasonable. With $1,000 invested in VRE, you'll be paying less than $4 a year in fees. Subtracting this from our dividend of 5.16% gives us a net annual income of 4.77% paid monthly. To qualify for a drip, you'll need to own $8,100 in VRE. With a yield of 5.16%, that gives us $418 a year in dividends, or $34.83 a month. The current share price of VRE is $34.72, and so we'll be earning a free share every month. That's 12 shares a year. VRE only contains 18 holdings, all of which are REITs. The main holdings include RioCan, which I talked about in my top three dividend stocks, as well as Canadian Apartments, Allied Properties, Smart Centers, and Choice Properties. These REITs are fairly spread out amongst the different real estate sectors. We have 33% invested in industrial and office properties, 23% in residential, and 20% in retail malls and shopping plazas. REITs are the best way for anyone to get involved in real estate, even if you don't have tens of thousands of dollars for a down payment. And with VRE, you are getting exposure to the entire Canadian real estate market. Looking at the price chart over the past year, again, we see fairly steady and consistent growth, all while collecting that monthly passive income. So there you have it. Those are my four favorite Canadian ETFs for dividend income. XIC has the lowest yield, but the widest exposure of the entire Canadian market. VDY has a higher yield and pays monthly income, but it is heavily concentrated in the financial sector. XEI has an even higher yield paid monthly, and it is more heavily weighted in the energy sector. And VRE also has a high yield paid monthly, but it is entirely focused in the Canadian real estate market. You'll want to buy each of these ETFs and hold onto them for life to collect that consistent quarterly or monthly passive income. And hold these ETFs in your TFSA to avoid paying any taxes on this income. If your TFSA is maxed out, then put them in your RRSP. Also, I suggest buying these ETFs using Questrade to avoid paying any commission when you buy ETFs. And this will save you a ton of money in the long run. So if you'd like to get signed up with Questrade, click my referral link in the box below and you'll get $50 in commission free trades when you buy stocks and you'll be helping support my channel. I hope this video helps you get started with ETF investing in Canada. I'll be releasing more stock pick recommendations, such as my favorite bond ETFs, my favorite US dividend stocks, and my favorite US ETFs. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really helps me build this channel, and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos every week. And be sure to tune into my next video, where I'll be breaking down what is a credit score and how to improve your credit score. 
Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.